Hi, today let's have a look at Remember Savable in Jetpack Compose. However, before we actually look into what the Remember Savable method does, we have to look at a couple other things and a problem that this actually is trying to solve. So, here I have a small application that I've created, it's like my Jetpack Compose playground. I have this player, I found the UI somewhere on web and just tried to recreate it with Jetpack Compose. You can see these two buttons, we have the play and shuffle buttons. And right now if clicking on them then nothing happens and I would like to click on the play button and then it change its um, the, the strings from play to pause or to stop. So in code I have this action buttons composable over here and I have action button composable. So the action buttons composable is composed of action button, <laughs> action buttons composables. It's just a row which takes a modifier from up and then we have these two action buttons and we have a spacer in between. Okay, so in order to be able to do something with the play button to change the text, we need some kind of a state introduced in our composable right now. So let's say we have a variable is playing equals false at the beginning. Okay, and now we have this play text and we would like instead to have if is playing, then we want to say pause and else we want to say play. Okay, let's make the code nicer. There we go. So if currently playing, then pause, else if not playing, then play. And then also we would like to be able to change the state when we click on this action button. Currently we cannot pass a lambda to one click over here, so because I did not implement that, let's do it right now. So we have on click over here and let's give it some default as an empty lambda and let's just pass on click over here. Okay, let's make the code nicer, there we go. And now we can define our own click callback over here for the button and in this button we would like to change is playing from whatever it is right now to the opposite. There we go. And now let's run it. The app still works, let's go to player, perfect, and now let's click play, nothing happens. The text did not change. And of course the text did not change because first we set the is playing to false and then we, we have on click, then we don't really start recomposition, so this action button cannot actually know that it should render something else, it should change because there's no recomposition happening over here. We have to make it somehow so that recomposition would happen. And for that, we have in compose this function, remember. Let's import and let's give it false again for the beginning. There we go. Let's compile that. It still compiles, we go to player and we play and nothing happened. Because of course, if we just remember this value, then we remember this value that is here in lambda. And there is still no recomposition happening when we change this value over here. What remember does is it has this lambda over here. If we have a look into the documentation, which is called a calculation. It performs this calculation and then it always returns the same result every time that actually this action buttons composable would be recomposed. So we can have a more, so right now I'm passing here only false, but if we would have something a lot more complex, some calculation uh, and out of this calculation, the result would be false, then this calculation would happen only once. Only the first time when the composition of this action buttons is happening, this value would be remembered, whether it's false or true, or maybe some integer or whatever. And then every time the recomposition happens, then the same value will be passed back. So of course, this will not suit our case over here. But in Compose, we have something called mutable state of, and we can give it a false right now. So now this remember method will remember a mutable state as you can see here, what's returned from the mutable state of function. So this mutable state object is of course immutable, but the value that it holds is mutable. So now our boolean, which currently is false over here, is mutable, it can change. Now we have to use 
dot value if we want to access this value and also if you want to set it we have to use dot value because we're no longer dealing with a simple boolean but now the remember function will return whatever the mutable state of function is returning and this is returning a mutable state of t so mutable state of boolean and of course this now can be available because is playing is immutable in this case okay so let's run it Let's go to player, click play, pause, play, pause, that works. Why does it work? Because setting the value over here on is playing on the mutable state, it does not only set the value, but it also triggers recomposition. So the action buttons here will be recomposed because over here the value changed. But at this point, we have one problem with this solution that we still need to solve because we can tap on play and it says pause and now if we rotate our screen look what happens now it's play again it's not pause we can of course click it and rotate back and it's play again and that happens because on configuration changes in android the state is actually lost so whatever was done it will not be remembered because the whole activity is recreated that is behind the composable and everything else we have here what we have to do is to remember our state if we have clicked on a play we have to remember that the value was changed and then when a configuration change like a screen orientation change happens we can restore this value and for that reason we have a method remember saveable there we go let's import that let's compile again let's click on player play let's rotate it still says pause let's rotate it back still says pause let's click again it's play let's rotate play perfect problem solved so with remember savable we can use any type of data that is that can be bundled so it can be any integer or any other primitive string or also a parcel label for example but if we need to save some more complex data then we would need to provide our own saver over here if we have a look at this method then it takes some inputs it takes a saver over here which is the important part so the default is auto saver and works with the things that can be put into a bundle but otherwise we would have to define our own saver and if we look at this saver it's basically just an interface with two methods save and restore so we can just use this interface and create some class that would implement the save and restore methods differently than the auto save is doing over here our application is working and we have our state here in the composable which is not necessarily the best place for the state to be therefore in the next future possible video we will look how to do it a little better with a view model bye bye